Most Unity teams already use Git, but two things still slow us down every day. Merging scenes and prefabs, and working with multiple branches at the same time. Today, we're going to upgrade the workflow. First, we're going to make sure that Unity's own Smart Merge is configured correctly with Git, and then we'll look at Git work trees so that multiple branches can stay open at once, and we'll add a Git work tree runner so that managing them feels effortless. Let's get started. I'm going to start with a really simple project here in Unity 6.3. You don't need 6.3 to follow along. I was just investigating the new terrain shader, which looks fantastic. In most newer versions of Unity, the default settings required for version control will already be set. Under Editor Asset Serialization, make sure the mode is Force Text. And in Version Control, make sure that the mode is set to Visible Meta Files. Now that's all we need to get started with Unity's Smart Merge. You might also hear it called Unity YAML Merge. So this tool comes shipped with every version of Unity, and today we're going to set it up to work with Git. To help us with this, I'm going to use a very powerful Windows tool called Everything. This is a free tool that lets you do really fast lookups in your file system. So for example, if I want to find my .git config file, that's easy. And then every Git repository has its own local configuration file as well, if you prefer to set your configuration per project. So for me, I'm going to work with my global configuration. So I'm going to open that up in Rider, And then I'm also going to open up my project folder so that we can start up a terminal. If you have a repository set up, you can just go into the .git folder. That's where you'll find your local config. But for me, I'm going to come back up to the root and I'm going to click on open in terminal. Most of you will probably also have the option to open in git bash. Now, I kind of like running git bash through the terminal because I can have multiple tabs open. Sometimes it's a little bit more convenient. If you want to set yours up that way, click the down arrow. You can see I've got git bash set up here, but go into settings. Down near the bottom, you see we have all the different profiles. I've already got a profile here for git bash, but you can just add a new one. Just set the location of your executable. If you don't know where that is, you could just use that everything tool. And I've also chosen a starting directory, and for me, that's just my Unity Projects folder. Then at the very top, you can choose Startup, and you can set your default profile. So instead of going into PowerShell every time, I just come into Git Bash. Now, let's update our settings. For me, I prefer to do it directly through Rider, but you can do it from the command line. So for example, you can set your merge tool to be Unity YAML merge. Notice that in my config, I've set mine to Rider. If I run the command and then come into Rider so that it refreshes, you'll see my merge tool is now set to Unity YAML merge. We can also set the trust exit code setting to be true. This means that if your merge tool exits with a non-zero status indicating an error, you won't get a prompt. Instead, Git will just preserve the temporary files so that you can have a look at them. You can also set the command to run from here in the command line, but to be honest, this is a little bit easier, in my opinion, to do straight from an editor. Mostly because it's just a big line, and in Windows computers, sometimes you have problems when there's spaces in folder names. An easy way to find where your Unity YAML merge version is, because it's nested quite a ways down in your browser, is to actually just use that everything tool again. So here in the tool, I just look for Unity YAML merge, can find the latest version since it comes with all the different versions I've installed. Click on copy full name to clipboard and there you go. On Windows machines just make sure that this name is in single quotes and then follow the rest of the structure. Merge is saying to do a classic three-way merge. The dash P says to run in pre-merge mode which is basically saying to run an automatic merge using Unity's rules. And then we have four path arguments and these are the variables that the BCS provides during conflict resolution. Now, before we move on, there is one other way of doing this. If you don't want to call the merge tool from the command line and you just want the Unity YAML merge to run as soon as you perform a merge, so basically without an extra step, you can have it set up as a merge driver here. Notice that the command is almost the same. We're using dash P for pre-merge and the dash dash force forces merging even on unknown file extensions. Now, for me, I prefer to run this as its own command using git merge tool, so I'm going to undo that. I'll leave a link to a copy of this file in the description in case you want to use it as a basis for your own git config. Okay, let's move on to git attributes. Now, I've already made a git attributes file for myself, but if you needed to make one from the command line, just use the touch command, touch dot git attributes. That'll give you a blank file to work with. Now for me, I prefer to have my git attributes and a git ignore file for each project, but it is possible to make a global one if you prefer. Let's open this file up in Rider. 
A git attributes file tells git how to handle specific file types, such as how to merge, diff, or normalize them within any repository. So here you can see I've set all files that end with unity, prefab, asset, and so on. When there's a merge conflict in any of these files, don't try to merge them yourself. Use Unity's merge tool instead. Notice that the last line looks somewhat different. Whenever we run into a meta file, what I'm saying here is that if two branches both changed a meta file, keep our version and ignore the other one. Okay, just one last optional step that will make the rare hard conflicts much nicer. The Unity YAML merge tool comes with a configuration file that's called merge spec file. This is a text file that just has some basic configuration and it's meant so that you can configure a way to handle cases if the Unity merge tool can't solve the problem. This is completely optional and actually you don't have to do anything here. If you notice on line 15 and 16, if you set a correct path to some kind of merge tool that you want, Unity will use that in case of big problems. So for example, I could just replace these lines with references to Rider. All I'm doing there is just replacing the placeholder to my actual path to Rider. Now, I don't actually want to use Rider as a merge tool, even though it has one. So I'm not gonna save this change, but if I page down, notice there's a whole list of default merge tools. So if you have one of these installed, it's just gonna use it automatically. And what I've been using lately is P4 Merge. This is a really nice merge tool that's free. You just need to pick your operating system and platform and you click download. Now I've already got one installed, but just so you can see, I can click on modify here. You actually get four different things you can install. The only one we actually care about today is the merge and diff tool called P4 Merge. Then you just click through, install it, and you don't have to make any changes to this config file. Okay, that's all the setup we have to do. Let's see this thing in action. Now I've modified one file already. I added a blank line in git attributes. Let's add it and make our first commit. Then I'm just gonna check out a new branch here. Let's just call it conflict A. Now in the conflict A branch, we can start making some changes to our Unity scene. Maybe I'll change the name of this cube. We could rename it to cube A and then let's move it into view. I'll just drag it so it's visible. Now if we come back to the terminal, we can add everything. Git status shows that our scene is ready to commit. We can commit it with a simple message, move to the cube. Now let's check out the master branch. Then we can come back into Unity and reload the scene so that we see our master branch version. This will just take a second and right away we see the cube is back to its master branch name and it's off screen again. So we've got a conflict between two scenes. Let's merge it in. So in this case, Git merged the conflict, no problem. Let's reload again. So now we can see we merged in the new name, we, the new position. The Unity tool is great for resolving simple conflicts like this. But why don't we make some more changes? I'm gonna rename the cube to Cube Master. I'm gonna drag it around just a little bit here so it's a bit different. And then why don't we do something extra? Why don't we add another box collider to it? Then I can come back to the terminal and we can add the scene again and we can make another commit on Master. I'll just say master changes. Now let's check out a new conflict branch. I call it conflict B. By the way, using dash B when you're using checkout not only creates a new branch, but moves you into it. So let's rename the cube here in our conflict branch to be cube B. For cube B, I'll move it around a bit, but I'm going to do a bit more. I'm going to remove one of the box colliders. And so now essentially we've made three different changes in the scene. Let's save this, come back to the command line, here we can add the scene, we can check it in, give it a simple message, many changes in B. Then we can come back to master. Now some of you might be asking, why don't I use a GUI tool? Well, two reasons. First of all, I know how to use the command line. And the second reason is I've seen many times the GUI tools crash while doing an important operation and they either completely corrupt the repository or at the very least you've lost your commit and what might've been several hours or in some cases several days worth of effort. Now I've reloaded the scene in master. All I'm gonna do here is move the cube around a little bit and change one of the box colliders to be a little bit bigger. Let's give the second one here a size of 222. Now we can save the scene. We can come back to our terminal. We can add the scene. We can make another commit and then we'll be ready for some more complicated conflict resolution. So now if I try to merge in our conflict B, Notice that we get an automatic merge failed. The message says to fix conflicts and then commit the result. So now we can run our git merge tool. In this case, the Unity tool is not sufficient to automatically resolve the conflicts. Well, not all of them anyways. There's one that it can't figure out. So it's going to fall back to P4 merge. 
No, P4 Merge is incredibly easy to use. You can use these red arrows up at the top to flip between conflicts. There's only one conflict we have to manually resolve, and that's the position of the cube. The easy way to do that is on the right-hand side here. I can select which version I want. The green icon represents the incoming change. The blue icon represents the current state of our master branch, and the yellow square represents the base, so the commit that is the common ancestor of both of these branches. So I'm going to choose the green one, the incoming change. I'm going to hit Control S to save it. You can also use the save icon up at the top. And when you're done, you just close the tool. This will give you back your prompt. All you have to do after that is hit git merge dash dash continue. Then just give your commit a nice message. I'm just going to leave the default, save that, and you're all finished. If we come back into Unity now and I hit Control R to reload my scene again. Now if I click on the cube, we'll notice it has the name of cube B. It only has one box collider and it saved the one that had the changes from master which had the 222 on it and you can see its position on the y is 4.56 that's what we set with p4 merge during the conflict resolution so now let's roll right into another very powerful and underused feature of git which is work trees the big advantage of using work trees is that normally in git you can only check out one branch at a time so if you want to work on two things simultaneously, like your main branch and maybe a hotfix, you have to save all your work in the feature and then check out the other branch, do your work, and then come back. With a work tree, you can have an additional working directory linked to your same repository. And in that directory, you can work on a completely different branch. Now I have WT as an alias for work tree, but you could just type this whole thing out. The full command to check out a new work tree is git work tree add dash B, the name of the branch we're creating, and then the name of the folder we're going to put it into. So the work tree is going to get a copy of all of the files from my repository. And when it's finished here, we can just move over to that folder if we like. You can see it's already set to the branch that we created. If I type git log, you can see it's retained all of our history. And now I'm free to do any work that I want inside of this branch, while in my other folder, I'm still working on the master branch. So there's all kinds of use cases for this. You know, for example, what if I opened this folder up in cursor? So here we can come up to the file menu and open folder. I'll navigate to my Unity repos and open up the water test folder. If I control B, you can see all the files that are included inside of this folder. They're all the things that I had checked in, including the Unity terrain samples. So for example, maybe I want AI to do something here. I could say, Give me a code review on the most complicated script in this folder. So now we can just let that run. And of course, you can use this technique to do all kinds of other things. You could run multiple builds for different platforms. You could use it just to try out some new asset from the asset store. Or maybe you just have some long running feature branch. And all the while, you can still be working away in your master branch or some other branch. And of course, there's nothing stopping you from opening a second editor for your second folder. It's just going to rebuild all the libraries and packages that weren't included in your repository. So maybe you did a little bit of work and then you come back here and AI is telling you, oh, maybe these are some improvements that could be made. So we can just ask it to make a change here. It's suggesting to add a null check. So I'm just going to get it to implement one change. And as always with these kinds of tools, don't just blindly accept what it's doing. Go and have a look. If it looks right, let's keep it. Then let's come back to the terminal. Here I'm still in our experiment branch. We can see the script has been updated. Let's add it. We can check it in with a simple message. And then everything in this work tree is up to date. I'm going to clear the terminal again. Then we can come back to the original folder that I had, which I called terrain shaders. And now we're back to doing what we set out to do in the beginning of this video, which is merge things in. So here you can merge using the branch name. If you're done with your work tree, you can use the git work tree remove command. You just pass in the name of the folder. Oh, it failed because I still have cursor open. Let's close that and try that one more time. There we go. Now, the nice thing about this is even if I've deleted the working folder, the branch that we created and all of its changes will persist. So I was going to remove it, but actually let's just type git branch. You can see I'm on master, but experiment slash water is still there. And so are our other branches. Since it's already been merged in, let's just delete that branch. Now, if we have a clear console, we can do a git br again. br is just my alias for branch. You can see it's been deleted. If we type git lg, which is my alias for a pretty log, you can see we've got that commit from our experimental branch. Everything is looking good.
Now, sometimes these git work tree commands get a little bit verbose because you have to type the branch name, the folder name, and of course you have to manage the folders that it creates. It can get a little tiresome, but there is one tool that can make this a little easier, and that's called git work tree runner. This is an open source free tool that was made by Code Rabbit AI. It's basically a wrapper around git work tree. Gives you shorter commands, easier management of things. So let's just have a look at how that works. There are some quick start instructions in the repos readme. But let's just walk through it really quick. So I'm just going to come up to my top level folder for all my Unity repositories. Of course, this isn't Unity specific, but all you have to do is clone the repository. Now, I already have a copy, so I'm just going to CD down into that folder. If you want to be a power user, you can check to see if Git has tab completion set up. This command just prints the currently active tab completion definition. Then we can add the current directory's bin folder to the shell path every time a new terminal starts. Here we're just adding it to our home folders .bashrc file. Then we can run the source command on our bashrc file. We don't have to restart the terminal to start using it. So let's look at a few ways that this makes working with work trees a little bit easier. Let's come back up a level and come back into my terrain shaders folder. Now here we can type git gtr new and then the name of whatever branch it is we want to work on. This does almost the same thing as we were doing before with the straight up work tree commands, except now when it finishes, it's going to give you a few suggestions on how you can proceed next, such as open an editor or start running some AI tool. So it has lots of shorter commands you can use, but I think for me, the biggest advantage is that it manages the folders. So if I open up my Unity project folder, you can see now we have the terrain shaders folder for my regular project, but I also have a terrain shaders work trees. Inside of here, it's made a special folder just for this new branch. And you can use that in the same way we were doing just a few minutes ago. Additionally, if you're done with a feature, all you have to do is type git gtr remove or rm, and that will remove the folder, but not your branch. Notice if I type git branch, you can see my feature is still here. So you could do whatever you want with it at that point. You can merge it in, you could keep working on it, or maybe you just want to delete it. If we come back and take another look in the terrain shaders work trees folder, you see it's empty. Since we did nothing with that branch, I'm just going to delete it. And once again, I'm pretty much right out of time, so I'm going to wrap it up here. I know lots of you who are watching have all kinds of tips about all of these things, whether it's the smart merge, your experiences with using work trees, or maybe you've got some advanced tips about the work tree runner. Feel free to throw those in the comments below. And of course, you're welcome to join us on Discord. There's always lots of good conversations going on there. And this week, we're going to have another giveaway. And of course, we have a new video every Sunday. So don't forget to hit that bell so that you're one of the first ones in on new content. Other than that, I'll leave another video up on the screen. Maybe I'll see you there.